Welcome to another Microsoft Access tutorial. Today we're going to talk about Microsoft Visual Basic for Applications. And we're going to talk about that in the context, of course, of Microsoft Access and what we've been uh, learning along the way and how to embellish our application by throwing a little bit of code to make some work more efficient. And sometimes you just can't um, do what you need to do in a macro. So you need to put a little bit of code in there and be able to add a little bit of uh, information to your data. So what I want to do here then is bring up Microsoft Access. And it's just a, a blank database at this point, because I'm going to just play with it, not in the context of any form or any report. I just want to show you a couple things. First, I'm going to show you about a subroutine. I'm going to show you then about a function. Later on, we'll discuss adding Visual Basic to a form or a report that would then be event driven. And those they refer to as classes in Visual Basic for application. So the classes attach to events where the functions and subroutines can be independent and be called from any point. So uh, a little bit of housekeeping here, a few terms and uh, information that you need to know concerning some terminology. So uh, keywords exist in Visual Basic. So there's some things you can't, some words you just can't use like date or time because they mean things in the language itself. So the word now we would refer to as, you know, the time being now. Well, there's a function called now and it returns the current date and time. So a statement then is a, an instruction. It could be one uh, word, it could be a, a few words long or a word with uh, something in parentheses that has parameters. Uh, a procedure is a collection of those statements and subroutines are part of procedures and we'll show you what a subroutine looks like. In fact, we'll write a little one and we'll write a little function too and send some information to it and, and get a return. The main difference between a subroutine and a function, a subroutine does not return any data back to any program or any object that is calling it. Whereas a function returns a value. So when you call it, you have to expect a value back and have to be able to place that value into a, um, a variable that you can determine yourself and then you can use the value that's in the variable. So modules store all the procedures that we write. So it'll store all the subroutines, it'll store all the functions. You can have several different modules and then you can call the functions or the subroutines within each module. And then the last term that I want to make sure that you know is variables. Uh, variables you set and you tell what kind of variable it is, whether it's an integer or a, a double or a text variable such as a, a character. And you'll, you'll work with um, those things on a regular basis as you want to pass values uh, back and forth. So what we want to do now is go to the create uh, tab up here and over here under the macros and code you see that there are modules and class modules and macros. We've talked about macros already. What we want to do is open a module here and you'll notice that when I open module it'll name it module one at this point. It's kind of like when you open a new Word document, it'll it'll be called document one. Or if you open a new um, Excel document, it'll call, be called document one there as well. So what you are getting here is module one. And it's at this point, it's unsaved. And there's a save button up here that we could save it either as module one or we could save it uh, under a, a different name. So what we want to do is, is um, comment first on this part up here. In my experience, I haven't ever had to change that up there. There's the option compare database. There's option compare text. There's several different compares that you can do. I leave it at database. It's by far the most versatile. And so far in all the coding that I've done, and I've, I've had pages and pages of code in an access database that has manipulated all kinds of data. 
And, and in all that experience, I've never changed uh, the option compare database and found it sufficient to do anything I needed to do. Although I suppose that I just maybe not have not run against a particular need to change it to something specific. Um, what I want to do is create a subroutine. So I'm going to start with a the word sub and I want to call it square it. And I'm just going to open and close paren. And when I hit enter, notice it'll write in there. It recognizes the word sub and knows that I'm going to have an end sub command at the end. And I like to write elegant looking code. So I'm going to put a couple spaces there uh, as indentations so that I can see readily that I have the beginning of the subroutine and the end of the subroutine. And then the code in the middle, I can see easily where that code is in relation to the beginning and end of the subroutine. And so what I'm going to do is first off dimension a number, and I'm just going to call it num in this case. And I'm going to dimension it as, let's say, an integer. And when I hit enter, it picks up integer. I wrote, I wrote int, and I, it showed integer in the text box at the top. And so when I hit enter, it selected that and moved on to the next, uh, next line. Then I'm going to take my num and I'm going to assign a value to it of two. And then I'm going to hit enter there. And now what I want to do is, is output some information to a text box. I'm going to do the message box. And I'm just going to somewhat ignore this, although I'll show you what all of those items mean for a message box. Uh, when I show you how to get information on all the different functions and all of the different commands that you can use with Microsoft Access. Uh, I'll show you where to find that. And in that, in, that, in that, I'll use message box as my example so that you can see what all those items are and how Microsoft documents what you can put in each of those spaces. So you can make actually a very robust message box that, that takes input and returns it back to the program and and you can move forward using that input as a yes or a no or, or you know, any kind of button that you want to put in there. So then what I want to do is I'm going to say num and then ampersand. And I'm going to put some text in here. Uh, two is two squared is... And I'm going to close. I'm going to put a colon there and close that. And I'm going to ampersand. And I'm going to take my num um, and caret two. So the caret is, of course, my um, is squaring it. Okay. So when I go out there, it recognizes num as my variable. And so if I were to actually run this, I can go up to the run command here. And I'm going to run the sub form here. And I get a text box here. Now, I didn't form that text book box. I left all of the optional uh, inputs as just nothing. So it just says Microsoft Access and gives me an OK button just by default. So 2 squared is 4. OK, so I have a little subroutine. And the subroutine uh, within it, uh, I'll put a text box so I can visually see it. It didn't actually save any values. That's pretty much the end of my uh, subroutine. So what does it look like if I want to create a function? So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to do a function. And I'm going to call that function square feet. Let's say I'm going to just calculate the square feet of um, an item. And my square feet is going to have to take in two values, a uh, width, height, and a width. So uh, I'm going to just call this d height, um, and I'm going to determine that that's going to be a double, OK? And, and I'm going to tab and then hit comma. My second one is going to be d width as double, and close parentheses, and my square feet is going to be a variable, and I'm going to determine that's going to be a double also. Okay, so what I've done here is I've created a function that takes two variables as input, d height and d width, 
and gives output of double. Now I'm going to define what we do with d width and d height so that my function works properly. So I'm going to space a couple times there. And in doing this, I'm going to give myself a little note here. And I'm going to say this, uh, assign this function's value. And notice what I did there. It turns green, which is the standard uh, way it looks when you're putting in a note. And I established it as being a note by just using the apostrophe at the beginning of that. So you know that that is a note because there's an apostrophe. And then it's green too. It's not a command. Okay. And, and it tells also, tells Microsoft Visual Basic to ignore it as a command. Don't try to look for a function named assign and variables named this function's value. It, it's just going to sit there and say, okay, I'm just a label there. And so I'm going to say square feet is going to equal the d height times d width. Okay? So what I've done now is I've taken the d height and d width, and I've taken a variable called square feet, and now I've assigned square feet to equal the multiplication of those two values that were passed to it. Okay? So that's the end of my function. Now, how do I use the function? Okay? So I'm going to look at how to use that function, and I'm going to just write another subroutine. And I'm going to call my subroutine area. And in my area subroutine, okay, because I don't put anything in there, I'm going to call my function called feet, square feet. And inside here, I'm going to have a five by four foot function. And now what I want to do, I do this all the time. I forget to tell it what it's equal to. So um, I forgot to put my, so I'm going to say num equals square feet. Okay. So num equals square feet. And it, it notices that I've already put a variable together there. Uh, in a subroutine, it really doesn't care about that variable much, except that in the middle of the subroutine, I can use it, but it'll be that variable will be deconstructed and the memory given back right after the subroutine's done. Uh, like it says, a subroutine never outputs a variable or a function or or a value. So, because it never outputs a a value, num is going to be deconstructed right afterwards. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to output it to a message box. And I'm going to say area of box is an ampersand and num. Okay. Okay, so now I've created another little subroutine there. And let's say I want to run this subroutine. I just keep my cursor in this area here. And I go up here and say run. And the area of the box is 20, 5 times 4. Okay. Now, I could, I could have it to be oh, quite a bit more elegant. In fact, I could have it be an input from a particular table, and it's going to give me a whole list of areas, potentially. Or it could calculate that list of areas and put it in another field. It could do all kinds of different things, as, it, as it's called, in order to massage or work with my data. So the, the possibilities here get very, very broad, very, very big. So I'm going to click OK here. And now I've created a subroutine. I created a function. Then I cr created a quick subroutine that uses the function. So you've kind of been full circle here. But there's a lot, lot more you can do. Uh, so I'm going to pull over here the what they call the Microsoft documentation. And this is the Office Visual Basic for Applications reference. And if I want to really know about anything within here, I can, for example, go filter this to message box and, and look at the language reference for message box here and open it up. And here gives me all the syntax. 
And remember when I started typing message box, it wanted to, me to put in a prompt in, within parentheses and the kind of buttons and title, the title on the message box itself and, you know, all the context here. And here what it does is it tells you all of those values that you can put in there to make that message box a robust place to go do it. Now, you don't have to memorize this, this long uh, URL. Really, all you have to do is go to any browser, and I happen to use Brave here. All you have to do is go to any browser, and you can then type in Microsoft um, I just use VBA reference. And if you search it, you can deep link into it right down here. And you can deep link into it, and there you are, right where I started. And all of the different applications for Office are here. And you can see all of the language reference. You can see the libraries involved. And you can see the specifics for each of the applications, such as PowerPoint or Outlook or Visio, because all of them will have their own little tweak, uh, tweaky uh, functions. For example, you'll be able to scroll through records in Access, but you won't want to scroll through records in Excel. Um, so there won't be a record set command, for example, in Excel where there would be in Microsoft Access. So there's various specifics for each language, and those are both there that you can see Access is documented there and Excel documented there. So here's where to get all the huge amounts of information for each one when you wonder about the syntax, wonder about how to use a particular function or a particular subroutine or a command. Um, you'll notice, you'll find all that information here. So I hope this gets you over the hump in wanting to use Microsoft uh, Visual Basic for applications, for whatever application really. I focused on Microsoft Access here, but obviously it's available for all of the Office suite of applications. Hey, it's been great. Hopefully see you soon. Thanks. I wanna thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on, on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.